welcome. My name is Kathy A and today we're going to do a very special show. This is a makeup line called Mally and it's actually named for a person named Mally. And I want to tell you her story and how she got this makeup company off the ground and then I'm going to show you a full face tutorial showing me from straight out of the shower and moisturize to movie star fab or something like that. <laughs> Anyway, here's the story of Mally Cosmetics. The story of Mally Beauty begins with this lady, Mally Ronco. She was born in Middletown, New York in 1972, and her parents were both doctors. They were Filipino, which can account for a lot of uh, Mally's beautiful features and coloring. Now Mally was very very close with her mother and she sat amazed every morning watching her mother get ready for work. She watched her as she put on full face of makeup and she always looked flawless and beautiful and elegant and put together just to be a doctor all day for a busy day. She learned all about makeup and how all the products worked and they tried so many of the luxury brands she was really hooked from a young age. Unfortunately, in 1974, Mally's mother was diagnosed with cancer and was given approximately six months to live. She actually managed to live another 15 years, Mally believes, because she took care of herself and she made herself look good every day and had a positive attitude. When she died in 1989, Mally was only 17. It was a life-changing event for her. Mally followed in her parents' footsteps and she went to medical school. She got a BA in Marist College, but she actually really wanted to be a makeup artist. She just loved it so much. She decided to not pursue the medical side and she got a job at Barney's at the Shiseido counter and she started helping clients. She was an unbelievable makeup artist, and soon word got around. My beautiful mother was diagnosed with cancer when I was two years old, and they gave her six months to live. She lived for 15 years. I believe that I actually became a makeup artist because uh, I was sort of in charge of her makeup when she was being taken uh, to the hospital. She would always yell out to me, Mally, pack my makeup! And that was my job because she knew that if she put her makeup on and she looked good, she would feel good. She was the most inspiring woman that I have ever had to know. And she just happened to be my mom. Every day when I make a new product, when I create a new technique, it's all because of her. It's because she gave her life for me. And I want to do that for other people. And I want to make them feel beautiful. And I want them to feel strong. Because at the end of the day, when you look good, you do feel good. And I honestly believe it. Mally soon started to freelance. And she was the celebrity's makeup of the stars. She'd put makeup on celebrities such as Heidi Klum, Beyonce, Angelina Jolie, Jennifer Lopez, Taylor Swift, and Rihanna. She had such a quirky and fun personality that she caught the eye of Sephora, who made her a spokeswoman for the Sephora line of luxury brands. She did a lot of demos on their behalf to help with sales. She became a media sweetheart. She soon found herself on television programs such as Rachel Ray and The View and even Oprah giving advice on makeup. She appeared in several magazines giving advice for makeup techniques and continued to freelance as a celebrity makeup artist. On one very special makeup session, she was making up a model and wound up meeting the man of her dreams, her future husband, Phil Beckett. Amazing mom. 
In 2002, after using so many wonderful products, Mally decided she wanted to create her own line of makeup. She seeked out makeup business mogul Don Pettit, and they created together Mally Cosmetics. They worked with the finest factory line cosmetics and came out with a quality product that is unsurpassed. There are hundreds and hundreds of different products, all bearing the Mali name, and these are high quality items. The next step was a no-brainer. They wanted to get on a home shopping network of some sort, and Don had some connections at QVC. They begged for a spot, and QVC finally relinquished them one hour online, and in 45 minutes, Mali actually on her very first time on QVC, sold out of her products completely. This paid all of their bills and allowed them to invest, and also made Mally a sweetheart of the QVC network. People loved her demonstrations and lessons in how to use makeup, and the products couldn't be beat. Kits were offered that were not available anywhere else, and Mally was soon on her way to superstardom. People who liked Mally were called Malinistas, and she also had very positive and uplifting messages. She never forgot about her mother's struggle with cancer and so she was involved with a lot of charities that aid in cancer research and help with victims even animal uh, shelters and the March of Dimes received some of her charity her products were taken up by Ulta Beauty and are sold there and they're some of the favorites in the lines they're also featured online on the Ulta website and this is just a store display. In 2004, Phil and Mally welcomed their twins, Pilar, who is named after Mally's mother, and Sophia arrived. And Mally brought them on set with her. And then she had a third daughter a little later. This is little baby Vivian. Mally has managed to kind of keep normalcy in her life and has a full and loving family life and she has recently released in 2014 a book called Love, Lashes and Lipstick, The Secrets for a Gorgeous Happy Life. She actually gives a lot of her beauty secrets and techniques in this book and discusses how she keeps her relationship happy and fresh. 
Mally also has her own website and she has a lot of videos on there that demonstrate the different products and release the new products and she's been featured in several magazines um, mostly about how she handles parenting she still promotes all of her products and she actually has infomercials now and she's also a regular feature in the birch box uh, glam bags she continues to be a QVC sweetheart and some of her products such as her volumizing mascara are award winners she is very popular amongst YouTube beauty bloggers and you can often see Mally products being tested, demoed, reviewed, etc. Mally's created a wonderful makeup and beauty empire, but more importantly, her motto, the things that make us different are the qualities that make us beautiful. She's a very positive person and it's a wonderful line. Thank you, Mally. Anyway, I hope you enjoy that story. Um, I really like this makeup line a lot and um, I'm just going to go straight into the demo um, on how I use these products and how I got to here because there's some surprises along the way. So here is from the time lapse photography, the magic of video. I'll see you in a few minutes. Here we go, whirlwind tour. This is the um, Ever Color Poreless Face Defender. This is a very strange substance. When you put it on your fingers, you can't feel a thing, but if you use the little pad, you can. And it's just an amazing substance. It just glides right on, very silicone-y. It's almost like the Emperor's New Clothes. You cannot see it at all but you can certainly feel it, the difference um, if you try your skin before and after it. Next is from the More Perfect Palette Kit. This is the eyeshadow base. And it's kind of a medium uh, skin tone color, slightly cool toned, uh, but it does cover any imperfections on your eyelids and it keeps your eyeshadow from creasing very very nice very creamy going into this is the ultimate performance perfecter pencil in fair and it's just it's a lot like NYX's wonder pencil but it's a little creamier and you can just spot touch little areas it's creamy enough that you can um, go right in around your eye area and I get those toy dogs tear stain marks on the edges of my eyes, uh, Pinocchio lines, lines around my nose, anywhere where you need spot touch concealing. It's just really nice and it stays put wherever you need it. And I draw around my mouth because I have a lot of little lines around my mouth and it just gives me that little extra insurance so that my lipstick doesn't bleed. Now this is the ultimate performance face and body makeup in light. There is one shade lighter. I got this one. I thought it was going to be perfect for me. It looks like I'm making a mud pie face, but just wait till the magic happens. And I'm just blending this in with my fingers. It is absolutely, totally sheer. It's almost like putting a layer of water on your face. You don't even feel it. And I know you're skeptical now, but just give it a few minutes. It melts into your skin and it looks natural. And right now it doesn't. I've got that Oompa Loompa thing going on. It is totally flawless. You cannot see that I'm wearing any makeup at all as far as the texture goes. The color still, I know, looks a little unnatural to you. But just wait because it's, it's just going to set in. Now this is the um, Cancellation Conditioning Concealer in Fair. And Fair is my color. I'm usually like an NW20. So I'm just doing that little Kim Kardashian thing and the concealer is my color. So fair would be my color. Now I'm going to be contouring with Aesthetica Contour and this color is called Picture Perfect. I really like this. This has been compared with the Anastasia Contour and I actually did just order the contouring kit off of hotlook.com. This does a wonderful job. It's kind of a grayish brown uh, contour. 
I forgot to get the Ma Mali bronzer, sorry. And this is Your Best Friend Neutralizing Powder. Now, Mali doesn't like people to wear powder. She thinks it ages you. This is Mali's Glow Blush in Mimosa. It's a liquid face defender. And this is extremely sheer. And again, it feels like water, but it looks like blush, and it's very subtle. It's not anything like uh, some of the more harsh uh, liquid tints that you're probably used to. On the other side, I'm using Mally's Glow, which is the color of the powder blush, the orangey one at the top there. It's a very nice, pleasant color. And that white stuff is a micro glitter powder. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. That stuff gets all over the place. I wish I hadn't put it on my third eye area and over my lip because they were just little itsy pieces of micro glitter. If you get close to me, you can see them. I did not like it. This color eyeshadow is called Mally's Glow. And yes, there's a Mally's Glow eyeshadow and a Mally's Glow blush. They are slightly different color, but it's the same idea. It's kind of a warm tone, light shade. Going into the next shade up, that's called Natural. That's the shade. And it's a very cool tone neutral. I find that a lot of the palettes um, here are, are cool tone neutrals. And I tend to like warm tones a little bit more. Going back into my Contour Power from Aesthetica. Uh, I like that for my crease color because I don't have a crease color from Mally that is matte. Although she has some large eyeshadow palettes. Uh, in the Buff is one that has a matte uh, shade that I think I might pick up because I absolutely love her eyeshadow. Now this is a Nolita Navy eyeshadow. Extremely pigmented and I'm just putting it, I'm packing it in on the corners of my eyes. I am going to also pack some of this Broadway bronze there just in the center of my eye to mesh it out and then I'm going to take a blending brush and kind of shear it out a little bit on the edges so it's not quite so abruptly harsh. The uh, eyeshadow base is extremely uh, powerful and strong and it holds that eyeshadow on there. But I could still manage to blend it. Going into the, um, the eyeliners, I decided to choose Gunmetal. And these are very creamy. You actually could do the waterline with these. Uh, and I'm just taking it just around the edge. And that is Gunmetal very very pretty color and I'm smudging it out a little bit with a pencil uh, brush just to smooth it out I don't like too many harsh lines now I'm using my contour powder again as an eyebrow powder I like using eyeshadow for uh, eyebrow powders and also bronzing powders if I don't have um, any kind of brow product from a line this line is a little bit pricey. It's my only complaint about Mally is that it is so expensive. Uh, I could not afford to buy everything to do a full face demo. So that's why I had to substitute a couple products. Now this is the award winning mascara, the volumizing mascara. I curled my lashes first, of course. And even though this is speeded up, it was eight seconds on each eye. And I go down to the base. I go back and forth and then up. And I'm spending an uncomfortably long time on this particular step going on to the other side and putting a second coat on the first side I like big old honking lashes and it takes two coats of this particular mascara to do that but it does last all day it doesn't smudge a lot of people have found this to be their favorite mascara Moving on, this is the Too Faced Lip Liner in Perfect Nude. It's very creamy and it's a, a neutral color. Now I'm going into Mally's High Shine Lipstick in Starburst. And this looks and feels like a lip gloss. Um, she's calling it a lipstick, but it is really beautiful. It's sheer, so your own natural lips show through, but it's a little bit better. 
Okay, now we're going into another step. This is the Ardell Lash Lights in number 334. These are natural lights. And I'm putting a little duo glue on there. I like to wait about 20 seconds or so before I stick it on my uh, lid. This contraption is called a Salon Perfect Lash Holder and it does help you with applying the lashes if you need to look. If you're doing it in front of a camera it's a little bit awkward because I would normally be uh, sitting in front of my makeup mirror with both hands and being able to do it at a different angle. Now there's an extreme excess glue on <laughs> these lashes so I mean even even those of us who do this a little more often than some of you um, have our bad days but the glue got away from me and uh, just a little bit too much there. Now I like this particular applicator from Salon Perfect because the back side of it has like a rubberized tip and you can push down on your um, eyelashes really nicely. It's a little Real Techniques concealer brush just taking away all the excess uh, fallout from the shadows and some of that micro glitter. And there I am using the bottom of the Salon Perfect uh, lash holder to help push in. It's better than using like a toothpick or a Q-tip because a Q-tip can sometimes uh, leave little strings of cotton. It's going to take a little while for that to dry and it's <laughs> once it dries you won't be able to see it. I'm picking up an eyeliner and I keep seeing that glue so I'm trying to make sure it dries before I do the next step. Okay, well, this is a little awkward. Anyway, I'm going to go back to the um, More Perfect palette. And I'm going into that navy blue again. And I'm just going to go over uh, what got jumbled around a little bit when I added a little too much glue. And you can see that it's adding a little bit more drama to my eyes. So you can wear blue eyeshadow. And I'm going back into that natural shade it's called and just going over the crease area a little bit and to blend it out into that corner color to make it um, mesh a little bit better. And putting a little bit more blush on. I like the powder version better than the uh, cream gel. And I'm putting a little of the light uh, on my lips. Now this is the Bridget wig from Paula Young catalog. Hair can make the woman. <laughs> the color is called Wildflower. It's the only light shade that she has. Everything else is kind of dark. So I hope you've enjoyed my story of Mally Cosmetics. It's a great line, a great person, and I had a lot of fun with this line. There are some very unique products that I've never seen before, and probably this one is one of the most unusual primers I have ever used, and I absolutely love it. And the first time I used it, when I stuck my finger in it, I could not feel anything. It was like this something from out of space kind of thing, like a substance from Roswell. You know, it was just so weird. So you really do have to open up the bottom and uh, take out their applicator. And then when you use their applicator, you can actually see the product on there. So when you're putting it on your face. But what is a really great idea to do uh, to test this particular substance out is to feel your skin first and then put that on and then feel your skin afterwards. Uh, the very first time I tried this, if you're swatching it in Ulta or something, I actually felt my thumb, the ridge here um, between my thumb and my forefinger, it's very rough. I put some right in there and when you put some in there afterwards you can feel how smooth and how wonderful this stuff is. So this was just really an amazing product. 
One of the biggest surprises was I thought it was a misprint, you know, because it says on the bottom light, and I'm very light, but, uh, you know, when I poured it out, I was like, there's no way in heck that this is light because, you know, I'm fish belly white light, you know, I'm not like light skin person of color light, so maybe that was the difference, I don't know, but. I actually like the look. It actually makes me look like I kind of went out in the sun for a little bit, but it's not an unnatural fake and baked tan kind of look. So I was really impressed with this because it feels so light and so thin. It's almost like putting just a very sheer layer of water on your face. It is just an unusual feeling. It dries down immediately. You can put it on with your fingers really quick. Um, I tried doing something with my beauty blender and it's just it's so quick you know the way it absorbs in is just so quick it's easier to just throw it on with your hands and it doesn't look blotchy it doesn't look unnatural it feels great it doesn't look like skin um, it doesn't look like skin <laughs> it doesn't look like makeup it looks like skin so I, I just I really like this stuff so I was really pleasantly surprised now the blush same thing this is a staining blush so this is on for life probably um it's a very very nice sheer formula and a lot of people are very skeptical about using liquid blushes because they've tried things like the benefits benetit and things like that and it kind of can look kind of rough on your skin it can be blotchy fall into the little cre creaks and crevices in your skin and, and look unnatural but this is kind of a creamier uh, gel format and I think that it worked really well it stained my skin just slightly so that it's not unnatural looking and on the other side I did want to give their regular blush a try out of the kit um, now this white stuff this is a micro glitter and she calls it her pow glitter and it is a very light sheer um, glowy kind of tone so it really does give you quite a sheer, but if you get up close, like if you're standing right next to somebody, they can see all the little micro glitters. And if you've got a lot of eye wrinkles up in this area, this stuff travels. It really does. So if you're going to use this stuff, it does make a nice kind of glow from a distance. But I suggest you use a setting spray of some sort so that this stuff doesn't move around because the micro glitter wasn't my favorite. And I put some right up in here and it wound up getting all over. There was a lot of fallout from the shadows. Um, I was a little heavy handed, but I really liked it. The quality of the shadows is very good. I would have liked a different assortment of colors. I like to have a matte nude for my crease. And of course that wasn't available, so I had to use my Aesthetica uh, bronzer that I had to use. I forgot to get the bronzer and I'm really sorry. But the blush is really nice, very pleasant. These are very, very doable. And of course everything is geared towards being neutral enough to be used on a variety of skin tones and I really like that about this line. Um, she's one of the first to have a really good uh, assortment for women of color or men of color and I, I just like that. I think that you have to be kind of open-minded and diverse nowadays and I get kind of angry sometimes when it's all like fish belly white girl stuff. So, <laughs> But um, that being said I felt as a fish belly white girl, I could use this stuff really easily and it transferred to my skin really well. It translated, translated. So as a fish belly white girl, an old fish belly white person, um, I found that this was a very age friendly makeup. It was a very beautiful makeup. It's long lasting, it's high quality, and yes, it is a little bit pricey, but I would say that it was well worth it. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I probably would have enjoyed a lipstick more. I'm not a big gloss fan. Now it's not a real sticky gloss, but it is a wet gloss. So, um, But it's pretty and it's got, if you look at it in the sunlight, it's got little shimmers of uh, different colors in it. So it reflects. It's a very um, positive, moisturizing uh, lip effect and I think it makes you look like you're very healthy and I think the goal when you're over 50, 55, uh, I'm turning 57 next month, um, I want myself to look healthy and radiant and pretty. I don't care that I'm not going to look young anymore. Uh, I mean 
the wig aside. <laughs> I just had to have this wig. To me, this was the supermodel wig. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed this special on Mally. I've certainly enjoyed this line, and I hope you'll check out some of the cosmetics. They did not sponsor me. They did not send me freebies. Nobody does because I'm too honest. <laughs> and I hope everybody's having a wonderful week. Have a beautiful day. Take care. Toodles.